Would you please pray with me? O compassionate one, in this time of prayerful meditation, come to us, open us, touch us, move us, and stretch us through your word and through the words that you place on each of our hearts. And, O oh dear God, may the words that I have to offer here this morning please you and honor you and glorify your holy, holy name. Jesus' sweet name we pray. Amen. Amen. On the way. On the way. Our gospel reading for this morning begins with these three words, on the way. Now, our reading from Luke today is probably a familiar story for many of you. We return to it every three years in our lectionary cycle of readings. I remember first learning about this story about the ten lepers in Sunday school as a child. Or maybe it was in vacation Bible school. And then later as an adult, in worship, and in Bible study. I've preached on this text before, and there certainly are a number of different themes that emerge from this familiar story. For one, this story is known, of course, as a healing story, in which Jesus heals ten people who were stricken with leprosy. It's also a story that is known for its emphasis on radical inclusion. Not only does Jesus show compassion and care for those who are social outcasts because of their medical status as having leprosy, but Jesus also recognizes and lifts up the only one among the ten lepers who is additionally seen as the other. For not, he's not just a foreigner, but he's also known as one of those despised Samaritans. And, of course, this familiar story also teaches all of us as Mr. Mark reminded us, what it means and what it looks like to express our Christian faith through gratitude and praise, as exemplified by the Samaritan leper. However, however, during these past couple of weeks, as I have been reflecting on this well-known pericope, a different theme, a new theme, emerged for me this time, which was prompted by those opening three words, on the way. On the way. That phrase, on the way, not only provides essential context for this particular healing story, but it also speaks to a significant shift and movement in Luke's account of Jesus' earthly life and ministry. Now, you may recall that the first three chapters of Luke provide us with the birth narrative of Jesus and a glimpse into his early years, as well as his baptism and his time in the wilderness. And then, throughout the next several chapters of Luke, we learn of Jesus' preaching and teaching and healing and ministry throughout Galilee. But, in the ninth chapter, verse 31, in the Transfiguration story, it includes the first reference to Jesus' anticipated departure to Jerusalem. And then later on in chapter 9, verse 
53, we read that Jesus' face was set for Jerusalem. And so, it is that point, by the end of chapter 9, that we begin to understand that Jesus is resolved to head toward Jerusalem in some final sense. Now, some New Testament scholars refer to the next several chapters as Luke's travel narrative, because now in the ordering of events, the Gospel writer of Luke emphasizes again and again that Jesus is on a journey to Jerusalem to die and to rise again. So the next eight chapters through chapter 18, the stories and the events in Luke's account take place under the looming shadow of the impending cross. And so all of that background brings us to this familiar story for today, here in the middle of chapter 17, where we encounter Jesus healing the lepers somewhere between Samaria and Galilee. And, as the story tells us, on the way to Jerusalem. Now, as familiar as this story is, I've never heard this story in quite the way that I hear it today. And I wonder how you are hearing it now in these times. Again, our text emphasizes that Jesus was on the way. Why do those words seem especially significant and relevant for us today? Well, among other things, it is a story about a consequential transition in Jesus' life and ministry. That gradual movement from what was toward what is yet to be. How many of you know something about life's consequential transitions? Well, that would be all of us, whether we realize it or not. We all know something about the beginning or the ending of a significant relationship, or the joys and the challenges of raising a family, or beginning a new job. Maybe you've had the experience recently of moving into a new home or a new community. Or maybe you're adjusting to being empty nesters, as they say. Perhaps you have felt the full range of feelings at the end of a meaningful career. Or you know all too well the feelings of fear and anxiety related to a new, unexpected diagnosis. Or the deep sorrow and longings that come with grieving the loss of a loved one. Indeed, each and every one of us have a whole lot of personal experience in navigating countless transitions as we move through the different stages and seasons of our lives. 
and here at First Church in recent times, we too have been moving through significant times of transition within our life together as a congregation. This past summer, as you all well know, we had to say goodbye to two beloved staff members. Mr. Kevin Jones as our Minister of Music, and then a month later, the Reverend Emily Corzine as our Associate Minister. These were two very difficult goodbyes with many deep, deep feelings. And then, in response, just recently, last Sunday, three among us were commissioned as interim staff members. Mr. Jim Gallagher as our interim choral director, Mr. Barry Mentor as our interim organist, and myself as the interim associate minister. It is fair to say that we are a congregation that is moving through a significant time of change and transition. And so, as you may have noticed, this theme of transitions is being explored in different ways and in different settings here at church. During the past couple of months, First Church member Dr. Scott Graham has led a number of presentations to a number of church groups on this topic based on the research by William Bridges, a best-selling author. And Ms. Jackie Dean, who is our commissioned minister for spiritual formation and direction, facilitated a spiritual retreat just last month on the theme of liminal space, or those in-between times along our life journeys. And our weekly adult faith formation classes will continue to engage this topic of transitions throughout the fall through various lenses and through the leadership of different church members and friends. Just this morning, Jackie connected this theme of endings and new beginnings to a very difficult story from the book of Judges. Here at First Church, we certainly are a people on a journey these days. As we move through, or as a wise friend said to me recently, feeling our way through these in-between times and these times of significant transition together. Together. And so, we are called. We are called to turn toward one another as we turn toward Scripture, and as we turn toward Jesus in the midst of all of this change and in the mix of all of the feelings of anxiety as we move through these times of uncertainty. Again and again, we are reminded that Jesus is present to us and with us every step along this way, on this journey. Our gospel reading for this morning from Luke teaches us that even on Jesus' journey, while he was on the way to Jerusalem, to what was then not known or understood by his followers, and yet he still continued to meet the people exactly where they were and in all 
of their knee. And there, and there in the midst of all of that change and an unknown future, lives were touched, personal connections were made, community was formed, and healing happened indeed. And so, how did that Samaritan leper respond? As Mark reminded us just a while ago, with gratitude and deep, deep praise. I'd like to close this morning with some words of blessing written by one of my favorite authors, Reverend Jan Richardson, who is a Methodist minister She's also an artist and an author. And this blessing is called A Blessing for the Place Between. It comes from her book called The Cure for Sorrow, A Book of Blessings for Times of Grief. Receive now these words of blessing. When you come to the place between, when you have left what you hold most dear, when you are traveling toward the life you know not, when you arrive at the hardest ground, may it become for you a place to rest. May it become for you a place to dream. May the pain that has pressed itself into you give way to vision, and to knowing. May the morning make of it an altar, and a path, and a place to begin again. Thanks be to God. Amen.